Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm here today to show you how to migrate your public files that are stored in Xano into our new private file storage. If you're not familiar with the private file storage feature, what it allows for is the generation of signed time expiring URLs so you can protect your sensitive information that is stored in file storage fields in your database. When you store a public file inside of your Xano database, that file is given a public URL. That means that if one of your users happens to get the URL for a file that maybe you are serving them via your front end, for example, that URL will remain accessible at all times until the file is deleted on the Xano side. It's very important to leverage the private files feature if you are storing particularly sensitive information or you just want to have a little bit more control over when your files can actually be accessed. The private files feature is still fairly new, so I wanted to show you how you can take your files that are stored in public storage and move them over to private using a function stack. So here in Xano, we can see that I have, it looks like about a hundred files in this workspace, and these are all public files, which means that if I copy the URL for this file, I can always get access to this file, no matter what. This URL will never go away, unless I happen to delete the file from my files library right here. Now, let's say that I have decided that I want to migrate some of these files to my private storage, or in this case, I just want to send all of them. I've built a simple function stack that you can see here, and I'll walk you through that. So the first thing we do is we query a database table and this query just returns a list of all of the files that we have stored in our workspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run this so you can see the output of this query. So here we have all of the records from our database with our public files, and you can see that these all have this URL here. Again, this URL is publicly accessible. So if I have this URL, I can always get to this file. I want to now take these files and move them to a private files database field. Now, it is important to make sure that you have a separate private files field. This is required for this to work. When you are adding a storage field to your database, we have the option to choose between public file or private file, and this cannot be changed later. So we already have this private files field, so I'm just gonna go through this whole table, and I'm gonna take the files that are in public files and just move them right over to private files. So let's take a look at that function stack. So we are looping against that query result with a for each loop. And the first thing we need to do is create a file resource. This step is required so that Xano can actually work with the raw file data in our function stack. We supply the file name and file data straight from the variable called item, which is the variable that the loop is using to iterate through that list one at a time. We then generate new metadata to be stored in our database table that can refer back to that file, but we wanna make sure to change this access field to private. This tells Xano that this is a private file, so do not generate a public URL. The value is just that file resource from the previous step and then the file name from the same place. And once we have that, we can edit the record in our database table. Again, because we're iterating through database records, we can just pull the ID right from that item variable. We can clear out our public files field so that original public file metadata is completely gone. And then we add the new private metadata to that private files field. And we're almost done. We have one more step and that is to actually delete the public file. And we can do that with a delete file function. It's important to note that just because you've removed a record that references a file, that does not mean that that file is actually gone. You do still need to remove the file from your Xano files library. And that is where this delete file function comes in. So when we run this, it will iterate through all of our files and move them all over to our new private files field. So let's go ahead and run this and take a look at the result. Okay, so we are all done and we can see, of course, in our return, this doesn't really help us much. It's just returning the result from our original query. But what we can do is we can go over to the database and we can look at our My Files table and we can see that all of these public files are now gone. 
and they have all been moved over to private files, which means that there is no more public URL to get to this file. And if we go over to our library and we click private files, you can see all of those files are now listed here. So in just a few steps in a function stack, we have taken all of our files and migrated them over to private files. Now, the next step would be for you to modify any other API endpoints that you have that reference your files to generate signed URLs. So let's actually take a quick look and see what that would look like. So we'll call this generate URL. And let's just go ahead and get a single record from our database. Let me get a file ID here. So let's just say record 201, that's the one we'll work with. So we'll add a get record from our My Files table and we'll get record number 201. We'll run this first and we can see the output here. There are no URLs returned, but we do have this path here. This doesn't give us a URL to access the file by default, uh, but it is the value that we will need to generate a signed URL. And we will do that with the private file sign URL function. So we need to provide the path, which comes from right here. So that will be myfiles1.privatefiles.path. And then we need to set our TTL, which is how many seconds this link will be valid for. We'll go ahead and leave this at 30 seconds for the sake of this example. We'll go ahead and click save and let's return that URL in our result. And when we run this again, we are given a URL to our private file and this URL will expire in 30 seconds. So let's try to open it up. So here I have opened a new tab with our file URL and you can see we just have some random data in here. There's really nothing special about it, but we'll give it about 30 seconds and we'll come back to it and we will see that this file is no longer accessible. Okay, so it's been a little over 30 seconds. So what we're gonna do now is just refresh this page and you can see that we get an error message that said the token is expired and when the signature expired. So this means that this file is no longer accessible via that URL that we generated previously. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this helpful. Using private files is so important, especially if you are storing sensitive information inside of your backend. Make sure to hit subscribe for more Xano content. If you have any questions at all, you can leave them down in the comments below. You can reach out to us on the Xano community at community.xano.com, or you can contact us via support chat inside of Xano. We'll see you in the next one.